Heading into today, I want to be transparent with how this came about. Uh, the element of the blessed man which we look at today was not in my plans to share, but as I considered the repercussions of our discussion on the seed that every fruit possesses, it brought another realization to my heart that was too necessary for us to ignore. Uh, the realization that there is a process of the blessed man. It'll be clear in a few minutes. For now, to the Word of God and Psalm 1. As we read, keep in mind, our desire is to intimately know and enjoy God, not merely to intellectually know about God. Verses 1 to 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree, planted by streams of water, that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. We go back to our thoughts about fruit. He is like a tree, planted by streams of water, that yields its fruit in its season. Every fruit has a seed, but let's think about the seed that is in the fruit in Psalm 1. My friends, there is a process. Seeds will be disseminated as we bear fruit, which is a result of meditating on God's word day and night. But for whatever reason, we can easily adopt a mindset that will discourage and disillusion our lives. And that, my friends, is why we are discussing the process of the blessed man. I want you, the listener, to know the way God works. Think this through. You don't bear fruit in the same season that you plant. Planting and harvesting aren't simultaneous. Growing up around the agricultural fields of Senegal, this was so obvious. People planted and then prayed for rain, and then waited months and months for full growth. Uh, though clearly speaking of the coming of the Lord, there is a principle presented in James 5.7. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains. As our lives bear fruit, the fruit of the Spirit, don't expect the result to be immediately changed lives. Expect that God is planting seeds, fertilizing soil, watering it, and cultivating a plant till ultimately he brings forth the fruit that he is producing. Follow the Psalm 1 journey. Meditate on the Word. Tree planted by streams of water. Bear fruit in season. Then what? Well, the fruit is enjoyed. The seed in the fruit is disseminated into the soil. Watering of the seed happens. Think 1 Corinthians 3, 6, where Paul says, I planted, Apollos watered, and God gave the increase. And then bear fruit in season. Think through this word process. It's a series of steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. The process of this blessed man results not merely in fruit born, but seeds disseminated and eventually multiplication achieved. Consider the psalmist's acclamations in 145.15 or in 104.27, where both speak of receiving food in due season. Maybe you are discouraged with what you're seeing in this season of your life. Maybe with your kids. You've been faithfully investing, pouring into them, sharing with them, loving them in so many ways, but nothing substantial seems to be happening. You're not seeing the fruit of your labor according to your definition. Maybe it's with someone you long to see saved. Maybe it's in a relationship where you desire to see restoration and forgiveness. My friend, allow the reminder. You've been called to bear fruit, not produce it in another. The good news is this. God is at work. And as Galatians 6, 9 reminds us, And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap, if... 
we do not give up. Reaping of the crops is not in the same season as the sowing of the seeds. Everything is in its season. Even more than that, the seed goes into the ground and in that dark chamber alone, cold and unseen by the eyes of every human being, life begins. As Jesus says in John 12, 24 and 25, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Are you looking for a product when God wants to use the process where are you focused on a desired result and God wants a surrendered servant? My friend, are you waiting on the Lord? Psalm 130, 5 and 6 tells us, I wait for the Lord. My soul does wait and in his word do I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman for the morning. Indeed, more than the watchman for the morning. I love this great promise from Isaiah 40. Verses 28 through 31, but just to think it through in a fresh way, I'll share it with you from the Message Bible. Don't you know anything? Haven't you been listening? God doesn't come and go. God lasts. He's creator of all you can see or imagine. He doesn't get tired out, doesn't pause to catch his breath, and he knows everything inside and out. He energizes those who get tired, gives fresh strength to dropouts, for even young people tire and drop out. Young folk in their prime stumble and fall, but those who wait upon God get fresh strength. They spread their wings and soar like eagles. They run and don't get tired. They walk and don't lag behind. Waiting on God isn't so much like waiting in a doctor's office. It's more the idea of faithfully waiting a table at a restaurant. It's a purposeful and active waiting, not a passive and aimless waiting. We bear fruit. The seed is planted and we wait. How do we wait? By constantly meditating on his word day and night and consistently responding in obedience to his word. Where are you waiting by doing nothing rather than looking for any opportunity to more fully know and live God's heart? So wait expectantly while faithfully serving. You are part of a grand story and God wants to use you and work in you today. Fred Pratt in 1970 wrote a hymn that is not too well known, but the words of the first verse touch on this process of God. For the fruit of all creation, thanks be to God. For his gifts to every nation, thanks be to God. Now, now, now get this part. For the plowing, sowing, reaping, silent growth while men are sleeping, future needs in earth's safekeeping, thanks be to God. I love that. Silent growth while men are sleeping, future needs in earth's safekeeping. Consider all the seeds in the ground today that have yet to break forth. Be encouraged. The Lord of the harvest is faithful. Till next time, even when all you have your eyes on is a product, continue bearing fruit knowing his process is perfect.